Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November here from Off Grid Ham Radio. Today I've got a short tutorial with the DIY 599PA500 amplifier and setup guide for the ICOM IC705. Stick with me and I'll help you get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. Whenever we're talking about critical communications off-grid, an efficient antenna is a big part of the equation. Even with an efficient antenna set up correctly, there are those times when we still need to put out a bigger signal for more reliable comms. Now, my primary data radio is the ICOM IC705. Now, for the most part, I operate the 705 QRP. When matched up with the right antenna, the results are usually pretty good. Even so, there are times where we'd like to achieve more reliable communications. So when QRP isn't working for me, I bring out the PA500 portable amplifier to augment the 705's own capabilities. When we want to set up the 705, we have to take care because the 705 has different settings depending on whether it's being powered with its internal battery or from an external supply. The first of these settings is the output power. We can find this setting by selecting function, menu two, and selecting maximum transmit power. Now the options are 0.5 watts, one watt, 2.5 watts, five watts, or 10 watts. All of these selections are enabled as long as you're connected to an external power supply. If you're using the internal battery from the 705, 10 watts will be disabled. This is a good thing because we should never put 10 watts into the PA500 amplifier. Typically, I'll drive the PA500 with 1 watt or 2.5 watts if 1 watt isn't enough. The maximum allowable input drive is 5 watts, so keep an eye on that maximum transmit power. Now keep in mind there are two settings for maximum transmit power. Again, the first setting is based on using the internal battery. The second setting is based on using an external power supply. Now let's take a look at what happens to that menu item for maximum transmit power when I plug and unplug the DC socket on the 705. As I plug in and remove the DC power from the external power supply, we can clearly see there are two different settings based on that external power supply or internal battery state. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to set them both at 2.5 watts. Now, when we plug and unplug a external DC supply, we can see that uh, cycling between the two different settings has the same output power, limitation 2.5 watts. I find this setting perfect when operating data modes with the amplifier. So this is basically the only setting we need to worry about on the 705. Now let's prepare the PA500 for connecting up to the 705. There are a few different cables we need. Some are necessary, others are optional. First and foremost, we need the jumper cable going between the ICOM IC705's antenna output and the antenna input on the PA500. Next, we'll need the antenna coax cable going from the PA500 antenna output to whatever antenna you're using. We'll be using a dummy load in this video tutorial. We'll also need the DC power cable for the PA500 amplifier. This should have been supplied with the PA500 amplifier when you ordered it. Next, we have an optional component on the latest revisions of the PA500. It's the push to talk cable. Now, the newer revisions of the PA500 have a built-in Vox circuit automatically triggering push to talk on the amplifier when a signal is detected from your radio. In this clip, I'm testing the push to talk interface between the 705 and the PA500. Testing. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Testing. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Testing. What we see when using the push to talk interface cable is push to talk stays enabled on the PA500 as long as I have my finger on that push to talk button. 
Push to talk is instantaneous and it will not be disabled even though you may take long pauses during your chit chat. Now if we remove the push to talk interface from the 705 utilizing the Vox circuitry built into the PA500, we can see the differences in how the push to talk functions. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we can clearly see the Vox circuit is activated by the sound of my voice into the microphone. Now personally, I find the Vox circuit to be well implemented and extremely easy to use. For those users who might like to adjust the Vox delay settings, there's a very well written section in the user manual for the PA500 showing you exactly how to do that. Normally no setting changes are required with the amp, but it's nice to know we have the option to do it if we need to. So now let's go ahead and install the cabling for the amplifier. The first cable we're going to connect is our power cable. Naturally, one end goes into the amplifier and screws down tight, while the other end goes into your DC power source. Now keep in mind, we can run 12 to 16 volts on the PA500. So here's an example. If you're running 2 watts from the 705 or whatever radio, at 16 volts from your DC supply, you'll reach that 60 watts. In contrast, if you're running just 12 volts into your PA500 from your DC power supply, you'll need to run 3 watts from your radio to reach 60 watts. Now let's finish up making the connections between the amplifier and the radio. The first one is our jumper cable. We're going to take that jumper cable and connect it to the antenna input on the PA500 and to the antenna connector on the ICOM IC705. Now earlier on we were talking about the push to talk and the Vox circuit on the amplifier. Well, now we have two options. We can utilize the automated Vox circuit built into the amplifier or we can trigger the push to talk manually. Now if you ordered the PA500 with the ICOM IC705 interface cable, it'll look something like this. Now remember, unless you have an early revision of the PA500, one of the original units, you won't need this cable. That's because the newer revisions of the PA500 have that Vox circuit built in. Still, if you want to use manual push to talk with the PA500 and 705, you'll need to plug that cable between the CAT control port on the PA500 and the ALC port on the ICOM IC705. Now, a few users have made the mistake of assuming because the PA500 has a built-in antenna tuner that we would plug in the interface cable to the tuner port on the ICOM IC705. That's not correct. We need the topmost port, the ALC port, to trigger the push-to-talk manually from the amplifier to the 705. The last cable we're going to connect up is the antenna cable. We're going to connect that to the antenna output port on the PA500 and to the coax cable leading to our antenna, or in this case, our watt meter and dummy load. And now I can show you how to power up the PA500. There are two buttons on the control panel of the PA500. One is band, the other is bypass. We're going to press them together for about one second. When the amp is powered up, we'll get a solid white LED on the left side of the control panel. We'll also get a blue flashing light letting us know the amplifier is on but in bypass mode. We'll click the bypass button one time, making the amplifier ready for use. Now the amplifier is in completely automatic mode. Band changing is automatic, Vox is automatic, the antenna tuner is automatic, band switching is automatic, there's nothing for you to do except use the amplifier. So now let's take a look at a couple of QSOs with the SSB, with FT8 and with Winlink to show you what to expect 
when using the PA500 with the 705. Echo Echo 44 Charlie, this is Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November returning. Ah, thank you very much, sir. I wasn't sure you were talking to me. You are 57, 57 here in Oscar Uniform, Lima Uniform, Finland. QSL? Now, many of you might not have known it, but you can also use the PA500 for digital modes. Here, I'm working a station from the UK Gulf Zero Kilo Papa Hotel on FT8, and I believe we were on 17 meters. Now, current revisions of the PA500 have a really cool built-in feature. They'll actually tell you when they're getting too hot. This is usually a symptom of driving the amplifier too hard, or transmitting for too long while operating at too high an output power. The amplifier will start with a flashing green light, and then a yellow light, and then a red light, and the red light says you're absolutely pushing it too hard, and the amplifier is getting too hot. If you haven't paid attention or you just ignored the warning signs, the amplifier will fold back the power to protect itself. If it goes high enough in temperature, Ultimately, it'll switch over to bypass mode to protect itself and your investment. As far as I know, there are no other amplifiers on the market this compact, this lightweight, and this efficient, offering this level of engagement or feedback for the operator. If I might add, the amplifier also tells you the current state of your SWR every time you're transmitting. The LEDs will switch over from the band indicator, switching to the SWR levels while you transmit. It's absolutely impossible not to know what's going on with the amplifier while you're using it. Now, data modes with the IC705 and PA500 are relatively simple. However, the ICOM IC705 has some audio routing features, which other radios don't have. This is especially true while operating the IC705 wirelessly with data modes. So when you're using the ICOM wireless utility over a network, either directly connected to the radio or through your Wi-Fi network, either way, you'll have to ensure the correct audio routing is selected. If, for example, you're not getting any signal out from your radio to the amplifier and out to the world. So go ahead and maximize the ICOM wireless utility. Click on your active radio, then click on the mod button near the bottom of the app. Ensure the V audio is selected in the mod select section of that screen. This setting will route the audio from your 705 and the ICOM remote utility out to virtual audio interfaces, which you can set up in your data mode applications. So here I'm working in JS8 call. If I open the settings screen, click over on the audio tab, ensure that you have the ICOM V audio, audio interface selected. If you're not getting a signal out of your amplifier from the 705, this is one of the reasons or possible reasons why that might be happening. Now let's take a look at the setting in JTDX. Just keep in mind that JS8 Call and JTDX are all based on WSJTX, so the settings are very similar. So go over to Settings and click over on the Audio tab. Now you'll see the ICOM V Audio audio interface there, just like it was in JS8 Call. Once again, I have to point out it is critical to have the correct audio interface selected in your data mode app. Otherwise, your 705 can't send any signal to the amplifier and out to the world. If you're still not getting a signal out of the amplifier while operating data modes, there's a couple of things directly on the radio we can take a look at. The first one is to ensure we're operating in data mode. It's not enough to be in upper sideband or lower sideband. You have to be in upper sideband data or lower sideband data to get that signal out of the radio. 
Also, if you happen to be operating in split mode, for example, in FT8 or JS8 call, make sure the second VFO or VFOB is also in USB data. This is usually selected by the software you're using, but sometimes it gets mixed up. So, the ICOM IC705 also has other audio routing options. These options are relevant when you're using the radio wirelessly. Now, one of these settings is called Data Mod, and it can be found under Settings, Connectors, Mod Input, and Data Mod. When you click on Data Mod, make sure Wireless LAN is selected. This will allow your data mode signal to be transmitted out in the world when you're using the 705 wirelessly. Now there's another setting in that same menu called Data Off Mod. You want to click that to ensure it's set on mic. Doing so will ensure your microphone functions properly when you switch out of a data mode and back to one of the various phone modes. Now, most of the people watching my channel are interested in data mode communications while operating either from home or portable. Many others are watching the channel because they're interested in off-grid data mode communications. Well, now you have an opportunity to see the PA500, the ICOM IC705, and my Microsoft Surface Go 2 tablet during an 80 media WinLink session. This is my primary off-grid data communication setup, the one you've seen me make so many videos about. Now, as with most of my WinLink sessions, this one was completely off-grid. It was also 315 miles or about 518 kilometers, which is well within NVIS range. Now, I don't always deploy the PA500 amplifier. Most of the time I'm operating QRP, however, when there's difficult band conditions, when there's a big contest going on, when there's a lot of QRM, that's when I break out the PA500. The 705, the PA500, and a Microsoft Surface easily fit on a small table in the corner without interfering with the rest of my equipment. I've been field testing the PA500 with the ICOM IC705 and the Lab 599TX500 since early 2021. Since that time, the PA500 amplifier has evolved into the best off-grid portable amplifier for HF communications available today. Now, this may be good news or bad news. It all depends on your point of view. But there are no other alternatives or good alternatives to the PA500. There's nothing else on the market with this level of functionality. Thank you very much, John. 59, India Kilo 4, Lima Zulu Hotel, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango, November. Bye-bye. Many thanks, Carl. Bye-bye. Kilo 4, Lima Zulu Hotel, John in Bologna, calling and listening. So now let's take a look at the different models of the PA500, some clever accessories available for the PA500, and where you can get this amplifier. So what you're looking at now is my IC705 in its portable configuration when I'm deploying with the PA500 amplifier. Now there's a few different components that make up this modular system. There's the 705 itself. There's the PA500 amplifier. There's the full cage from POV mounts. Finally, there's the ICPA frame from the QRPStore.com. Now the goal was to create a modular system, and we do that by mounting the POV mounts cage on the 705, then using the ICPA frame from the QRP store to tie everything together. Now the first question many operators ask when they see this setup is why didn't I just buy a 7300 from ICOM? Well the reason is current consumption. The problem we have with radios like the IC7300 is the receive current draw. Also, the transmit current draw is quite inefficient. So rather than deploying an inefficient 100 watt radio in the field, we utilize the features and capabilities of the 705 and the PA500 for a much more efficient station. 
So now let's take a look at the PA500 itself. This is the basic model. Now I've already done a video on this amplifier, actually two different videos on this amplifier. So I'll just give you a basic rundown. It's a 60 watt amplifier. It has a built-in antenna toner. It's got built-in bandpass filters, automatic band switching, automatic antenna tuner. It also has incredibly low, actually ridiculously low current consumption and pulls less than 10 amps at 60 watts. In contrast, there's the PA500 Echo, or better known as the Expedition model. The Expedition model puts out 100 watts at less than 10 amps. It's got extremely low current consumption. It's small, it's lightweight. It's got an automatic antenna tuner, bandpass filters and auto band switching, temp monitoring, high temp protection, Vox or manual push to talk. It's also got a temperature controlled fan. To be fair, there really are no alternatives to the PA500 or the PA500 Expedition model on the market today. I'm just grateful to Delta Lima 4 Kilo Alpha Oliver for designing and manufacturing something so special for the most passionate of HF radio operators. Okay, before I forget, let me tell you where you can get them. If you're in Europe, pileupdx.com. You've heard about them on the channel before. In North America, the qrpstore.com. That's Ed. He's a great guy. Give him a call. Send him an email. In the United Kingdom, Nevada Radio, which is another great place. NevadaRadio.co.uk. Every place else, go ahead and join the DIY 599 group at groups.io and ask your questions there. To finalize this video, let's talk a little bit about the PA500 and data communications. As I've mentioned earlier in the video, many of you already know that primarily I'm a data modes operator. JS8 call, VAR AC, WinLink, ION 2G, or any of the networking modes that allow me to get value out of that mode. I'll occasionally use FT8 for antenna testing or even hardware testing as I did for the PA500 and PA500E, but I digress. When I'm operating casually, I mean, when I'm operating for fun, I'm generally operating QRP. When it comes to emergency communications, or not even emergency communications, let's say critical communications where reliability is a factor, that's when I pull out the PA500 amplifier. The PA500 gives me the information I need, the reliability I require, and helps reduce operator fatigue by not having to fiddle with it constantly. I can drive this amplifier hard with data modes without having to worry about a dirty signal getting sent out over the air. And if you follow this idea of better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it, the PA500 is small enough and light enough to be carried along just in case. Now for those of us who have a single radio for both portable work and work from home, the PA500 allows you to have your QRO station at home if you like, while still maintaining that QRP presence out in the field. Here you see I've got the Microsoft Surface Go, I've got the ICOM IC705, and the PA500 amplifier sitting on a small desk in the corner in part of my house. Now connected to the 80 meter Skyloop antenna out in the yard, no one on the receiving end of my signal would ever know this station is anything less. Now I know the PA500 and the PA500E aren't for everyone. Whether it is or it isn't, that's not for me to say. It's entirely up to you. So what do you think about the PA500 and the Expedition model, the PA500E? I mean, as far as the design, the functionality, the feature set, let me know what you think in the comments. The only thing I ask is that you be polite. A huge thanks to the YouTube members of this channel and our Patreon members who support these videos. Also, a lot of you have been using that super thanks feature to support individual videos that you like. I really appreciate that and encourage you to keep on supporting individual videos if you'd like to do so. It really helps the channel out. 
So with that said, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please leave me a comment and or a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.